want to share with you today a very simple recipe it's only three ingredients yes three ingredients and I'm going to do it today in the or my new Kasori six quart pressure cooker they reached out to me and mom I mentioned it and my mom was like oh you got it it's like tons of recipes on it and tons of videos on it and you got to try it so when I got it in the mail I was so impressed by all the different settings I'll show you what comes with it and all the different um, settings and so forth it has different functions it's just not a pressure cooker and so you can make desserts to yogurt to stews to sauteing your foods so let me show you all of that and this week has been a really busy week i don't know if you can see in the corner over there katrina's diploma yay that's why i've been a little mia so i'm working on their party doctor's appointments um some of everything guys and I want to cook a meal for them today I don't want to go out and buy anything so we're going to use the pressure cooker setting versus doing the slow cooker I always do the slow cook style six hours so let's see how this works with the pressure cooker okay the items that you will get with your Kasori pressure cooker is you will get a glass lid you will get a rice spoon it also is a rice maker this is your water collector cup so we're going to figure out how to put that on when you are pressure cooking and then you will also get a ladle you will also get a steam rack for vegetables and then also you can boil eggs in here too so that is awesome and then you get a extra ceiling ring one already comes attached to your kasori um, lid here I'll open that up in one second and show you what else you get you get a Kasori recipe book and I'm gonna show you did let me go ahead and just show you now so when I was looking in the recipe book I love that it has this cheat sheet here of the different types of if you're using vegetables if you're using the poultry meat or fish and my meat i believe is around four pounds and it just lets you know how long to cook it for and so forth and then here it also has like um about every three pages it has like an insert of this one says meat stew less on pressure high less 25 minutes normal 30 minutes more 45 minutes and I think the next one is poultry and it does the same thing there so like every couple of pages there's soup they have really pretty pictures in here beans and chili it has like a little cheat sheet very pretty pictures multi-grain you can make quinoa cinnamon oats in this pressure cooker I saw where devil eggs chocolate fudge I even saw where you can make peach cobbler so and popcorn <laughs> devil eggs so lots and lots of recipes in there I would like to do the peach cobbler for them I'm not a fan of peach cobbler but I would like to do it for them you will also get a Kasori instruction book to tell you what to do and then also a bonus warranty yearbook here yearbook bonus year warranty so you just fill this out within 14 days and you'll have a bonus year warranty an extra year okay now we're going to open our kasori and it has a lid and it screws off that way you turn it counterclockwise you have your valve up here and a light Here's your seal, so if you need to replace that, you will pull that out. And then also you have your stainless steel pot. This is six quarts, so that's plenty for my family to eat. Really nice. And it also has the measuring there in cups, so that'd be easier for the rice. And then here is the inside of your Kasori pot. Then here you have all of your preset dials. So here is the meat stew, poultry, 
soup, beans, steamed vegetables, multi-grain pasta, bull, steamed potatoes, reheat, bake, saute, hot pot. So you can use this also as um, the new uh, craze that everybody's doing the Instapot. So this is everything in one. Yogurt, slow cook, white rice, brown rice, and I think I went over everything, multi-grain. So let's get started with this. Your on and off switch. Stop, delay, keep warm, manual pressure temperature, your minus and your plus, the adjust here and um, here's your dial here to where it says pressure and unlock. So let's get started. Okay guys, so for this recipe, all you're going to need is a can of cream of mushroom soup. And it could be any brand. I normally have Aldi, off brand, sometimes I have Campbell's. And Lipton onion soup mix. Normally I always have the Dollar Tree. Well, yeah, the Dollar Tree brand, you get three in a pack for a dollar. The Aldi brand, that's what I meant to say first. That's what I normally have. Um, I think we cooked out on the grill, so my brother picked this up for food line because I will get Lipton, but a lot of times I just get the Equate brand from, not Equate, <laughs> Great Value brand from Walmart. And I do have that in there, but I'm going to use this today. And then a roast. So, um, that is a pretty good size for my family. And, but most of the time I try to get the larger size. That is about five, almost five pounds. And that is all you need. You can add vegetables if you like. Um, serve this with rice. It could be white rice, brown rice. You can also, the vegetables you can add to it to cook. Potatoes, celery, carrots, I'm trying to think what else. Peas, whatever you put in your stew, beef stew, or you can just, I have done that too. Or you can just cook this and serve it with rice and veggie. So I'm just going to place my, my hands are clean. I just finished cleaning this, um, the stainless steel pot and make sure you dry it as well because you don't want to get shocked when you place it down into your kasori pot. And now I have to wash my hands. I should have used tongs. And... You're just going to simply open up your box of lip to onion soup mix. And I thought that everyone knew about this recipe because it's so simple. But some people were asking me um, how exactly I made mine. So you're just going to pour that down on it like that. And one pack is enough. But I like mine to have more seasoning. So I do put another pack and a half, I mean another pack or a half a pack or either another whole pack. And just take your cream of mushroom soup and you're just going to place that over your, it doesn't have to be exactly on it, but um, on your roast. And if you're cooking in a slow cooker, you will add about, you don't want to completely cover it, but maybe um, have it halfway submerged. So that's what it looks like. And I'll go ahead and add another one. So we're out for the summer and we're trying not to go to the drive through And I love kitchen gadgets. About, if you follow me on Instagram, I showed where I got a toaster oven and all that stuff. Stuff to make it easier for myself and for the boys. Okay, so I'm getting ready to measure my water. And I realized, that I show you guys the measuring cup that came with it? I don't know if I did. It was sitting over here to the left. So here is the measuring cup that comes with it. And it is one cup. It does have... um. It does have the measurements on the side, if you can see that. 
Okay. And then I put about three cups of water into the pressure cooker. And then now I'm going to place this down in here. Slide this over. And it's not completely submerged, but it is just about submerged, if that makes sense. I can't tilt it over. Let's see if I can show you guys. There you go. So you guys can see. So it's still out of the water, but not completely. And one thing I like about this recipe is that it makes its own gravy. You may have to add some flour. Sorry, guys. Some flour or some cornstarch to thicken it. And I'll show you guys how to do that if need to with this. But I think everybody knows how to do that. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to plug, put my lid on and I made sure that I cleaned it and washed it good. It has a unlock and a lock position. So if I turn it back to the clockwise, it should be locked and there it is. And then now you're going to hear on your pressure cooker dial right over here you're going to twist it and make sure that it's in the lock position so I had to turn it is a counterclockwise to make sure and they have the if you can see it the lock and the unlock there so you just twist it counterclockwise and then I'm going to turn this around and you have to make sure if you're using the pressure cooker function that your water reservoir or water holder here is attached. And you really just slide it on here. So I'm going to make sure I turn this around so you guys can see. And I have it like, so just slide it in. There it is. So, all the directions are here for you to follow because when you look at this, it looks like it's on the inside, but it's on the outside. Okay, guys. So, now is the time you will plug it in. I plug it in beforehand. It will do that beep. Ding, ding, ding. And <laughs> now you will set it at the pre-settings of, these are preset for pressure, cook, pressure cooking. So, I'm going to use beef stew which is here. I don't know if I can zoom in all the way so you guys can see. But here is the meat stew. It says 30 minutes. I'm going to do more. So reading these directions, it looks like if I hit this plus sign here, it will go to 45 minutes. And I'm only going to do that because looking at the diagram here on the next page where it says pressurize cooking function times I am using beef stew and because I my meat is at least about five pounds I think the 30 minutes is for four to three pounds I'm going to do 45 minutes so yeah so we're gonna see how this goes and let's hit plus it didn't work <laughs> let's see let's see okay so when it makes the circle thing around and around and around like it's a track on a treadmill, it is pressurizing itself now. And once it builds up its pressure, it will display the 45 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever your cooking time will be. And it will start counting down. So that means it's starting to cook. And then once it's done, the three beeps will go off and I'll let you know it's done and then it will be set on a warming setting for up to six hours so let's see okay so now my roast has finished cooking for 45 minutes I did let it sit it has been sitting for 15 minutes so my red valve back here has let's see if I can show you guys has dropped so when the pressure is up that valve there will be up. 
So now what I'm getting ready to do is open it up and first you have to unplug it and if you do it without waiting, I was uh, steam cleaning my floor, you would, um, you would, let's see, get your oven mitt and I haven't done this yet and then you'll release the valve to let all the pressure go out and then that button will go down as the pressure settles down and goes out then you will un unplug it but since mine has been sitting my red valve has already went down so I'm going to make sure that all of the pressure is out so I'm going to turn it to the unlock position so you're just going to turn it back that way you want to put oven vents on because the steam could be hot And you see that it is raised now. Where you go? And excuse Josiah. I cleared out the living room, so he is running throughout the entire living room. So again, mine has been sitting, so there wasn't I didn't hear any air or anything like that. Maybe there is if I did it um maybe five minutes or a couple minutes after it finished cooking. So now I'm going to open it. And lift it up. And see what my roast looks like. Now normally it falls apart off the bone and everything. Not off the bone, but falls apart by itself. So let's see. Okay guys, so it did cook. It is not tender, of course, because it was pressure cooked versus slow cooked like I normally um, cook it so um, also when it is slow cooked it has time for the flavors to infuse inside the meat and this did not so it is coming off but it's not coming off as when I do it in the pressure not pressure cooker when I do it in the slow cooker it just shreds it falls apart just when you're picking it up so um, I probably will not cook the roast on, unless I just wanted some roast, I will not cook it pressurized. I will always do it slow cooked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thicken up my gravy, which is in here, and then serve this, put this back in here, and I think I'm going to put it on a low temp and let it simmer. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I have it on the, and excuse the microwave, I have it on the saute brown setting and I have it on low. So when you want to adjust it here on low, normal or high, you just hit the adjust button. And now I'm going to add some cornstarch. And I usually don't measure this. This is some cold water here and I'm going to put my cornstarch here. And then I'm just going to take a spoon, I guess I can use a spoon, or a fork, and you're just going to mix that up together. And I may need more cornstarch. And you can also use flour, and this just thickens up your gravy if you want it to be thicker whenever you're making a dish with some type of gravy. It could be chicken, turkey, whatever. I'm going to add some more cornstarch. So I kind of eyeball it. So sorry I can't really give you measurements. But it might be on the side. Excuse Josiah. And what I did guys is I end up just cutting up all of the roast. And I'm going to put the rest in here. And then I'm going to add my cornstarch. And do it gently because it's hot. And you don't want it to splatter. But I know for future, and I kind of knew this already, I think, but I know in the future to do that on a slow cook setting. And 
this is just my cornstarch water and I'm just going to add that in there slowly and you can add little bit by little bit and you want to make sure to use cold water and mix it because you don't want it to be lumpy and now guys I have lowered the setting to I put it on bake now and then I changed it to low so I'm just going to let this simmer I have it on a bowl or had it on a bowl a saute will bring it to a bowl so that the gravy can thicken up and it's thicken up really great so what I did is I used about I had that much left so it was full to the top and then I used I think this is a <laughs> starch on it um, a half a teaspoon of starch and then another fourth of a teaspoon of cornstarch so that'll help you out in a cup of water and my veggies are ready and I normally use the brown rice boil in a bag when I use brown rice I will buy the bag itself but I, this is quicker a lot of times and I just put it in a bowl put it in a microwave and you probably I'm sure you can put it in a pot but I usually just put it in a microwave and it's done for my family really quickly but a lot of times I do use white rice I use both white rice white rice and brown rice but I like to get the brown rice boil in a bag but I will use the regular kind in a bag but most of the time with the white rice I get it in the box or the bag I don't get the boiling bag if that whole makes sense <laughs> and that's usually because the brown rice can be a little bit um, tougher than the white rice so that's why I get like like it in the boiling bag JJ's a YouTube head. All right, and I am just about done with mine. You give it a thumbs up too, but you didn't eat your food though. <laughs> thanks so much for watching, guys, and thanks for story.